distinguished participants, great retirees of Lagos State Public Service. Uh, let me first recognize my PS, who is also with us. PSPSO, the captain of the body of permanent secretaries, Mr. Samson Ajibaji. Good morning, sir. I would also like to recognize our distinguished members of Association of Lagos State Retired Heads of Service and Permanent Secretaries that are also with us. This morning, uh, we are going to be looking at nutrition in retirement. I use this opportunity to welcome each and every one of us once again. Uh, before we go further, I would like someone to quickly do an open prayer for us. Please unmute yourself if you want to pray for us and go ahead, please. Who is praying for us? Okay. Let me quickly do the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, is an opportunity once again to be alive and to be on this program. Father, we ask you to take absolute control, have your way. At the end of it all, let only your name be glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, without wasting much of our time, I would like to invite the Permanent Secretary, Public Service Office, to please declare the meeting open. Please unmute yourself, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, all. Good morning, sir. Uh -huh. You may not uh, hear their uh, response because they are on mute. Okay. I checked the participants now, the list, and I'm highly delighted to find there my sisters and colleagues and friends. I can see Mrs. Sabide Miraji and the rest of them. So I'm saying good morning, sir, sir, mass. It's, it's a good thing that we are having this uh, webinar and the, the topic of discourse seems to be very germane and very apt. So on behalf of the head of service, I want to congratulate every one of us who are participants in this program and to let you know that the topic that is to be presented for discussion is quite relevant to every one of us, not just retirees, even those of us still in active service, nutrition and retirement. Nutritionists will tell us that uh, we watch what we eat. Generally, we watch what we eat, we watch what we say, we watch what we do. And everything we do, everything we say, everything we eat, we must do it in modesty and also we do it right. That is very, very important. If you are eating, we eat right. And that is the essence of this topic so that they tell us, at times we just feel it's just being uh, hungry, just find anything I eat. But then we are trying so they will tell us how we eat right. And you know, health is wealth. And what we eat goes a long way. Like the Yorubas we say, Angel or when you eat right, you feel you are healthy and you are good. So I want to congratulate us and also welcome our facilitator for today. Surely I know they will do justice to that. And we are all going to benefit from this topic. Not only are we going to listen, we're also going to strive as much as possible to practice what we have taught. Watch. You know what, you know how you are now. After the lecture, put it into practice. That is, 
you will be taught how to eat right and what to eat that has all the nutrients that is supposed to be there. By the time you have all that, in another few weeks or months, watch yourself, you will see the difference. That I can assure you. So I want to congratulate on this note on the behalf of the head of service. I want to declare the webinar open and which was useful and fruitful deliberation. Thank you very much and remain blessed. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, I want to say welcome to each and every one of us. I see retired palm sex in the house. Thank you for joining us, SARS and MARS. Uh, today, our topic is nutrition and retirement. And our facilitator for today is Mrs. Oluwa Koride Adetoni. She is a passionate woman who has a BSc in nutrition and dietetics. She is a registered dietitian and nutritionist. She presently works as senior, as senior nutrition officer at Lagos State Ministry of Health, where she gives dietary counseling and intervention to civil servants. And she works at Polari Koka Clinic, Secretary at Alausa. He is also a registered member of Nutrition Society of Nigeria, Institute of Dietetics in Nigeria and Dietetics Association of Nigeria. She has got trainings on food safety and hygiene. She is happily married and blessed with two children. Please join me to welcome Mrs. Oluwa Korede Adetoli. Adetoibo. Please let's put our hands together for her. Let's celebrate her. Mr. Adetoibo, you have the floor now. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mars. Good morning, sir. Standing on all existing protocol. Good morning. I want to say thank you for this big opportunity to talk to us about our diet in retirement. All right. So our topic of today is nutrition in nutrition and retirement. You know, people tend to ask what is the retirement age? What is aging? What's aging all about? What is aging all about? What is retirement? Haven't gone through life and um, gone through a lot of processes in life. Aging is a process of becoming older. It also represents an accumulation of changes in human beings over time. Aging can encompass, aging encompasses um, physiological changes, physical changes, and um, also social changes. There's a de definition for it, the WHO definition for aging. There's a WHO definition for aging. I want to believe I'm still on. Okay, there's a virtual definition for aging, which is the process of developing and maintaining a functional ability that enables well being in aging. So, aging adults, aging starts between the age of 60 and 70. And so, there is this passion, there's this, um, there's, there's the need for the adults to age fast and also age well, to have healthy, to stay healthy, and you know, to live right until death. However, during this period of aging, there are chronic illnesses that come up, that are prevalent. These chronic illnesses are illnesses that cannot be cured, they can just be managed. 
Okay, so the aging period starts from between 60 and 75. And it's so interesting to know that most of the people here that have joined us are the retired. So we want to be sure of what we eat. We want to be sure of how we eat. We want to be sure of what best to consume that would make us physiologically and um, psychologically fit until death. Also trying to prevent diseases, okay? So that's what aging is all about. It's a time that there is physiological change, okay, and that. So can we move to the next slide? So some of these changes that may occur during the retirement ages are cardiovascular. There are changes in the cardiovascular system. Like in the cardiovascular system, we have reduced blood vessel elasticity. The, blood, the elasticity of the blood vessels reduces. There's blood volume stroke, um, stroke volume output. There's increased stiffening in the arteries. And then also conditions like the blood pressure also. We also have gastrointestinal changes. The gastrointestinal system changes. There's a reduce in saliva, secretion of saliva in the mouth, and also the way that food is being broken down, the way the teeth grinds food is reduced. There's also what we call the dyspagia, which is difficulty in swallowing. For older adults or older adults from the age of 60 and above, there's usually difficulty there's usually difficulty in swallowing. Also, we have changes like mus musculoskeletal systems where you have the reduced body mass, okay? The bones begin to shrink. Also, the fat mass increases and then activity level drops. So these are changes that occur at old age. These changes that occur at old age. Can we move to the next slide, please? We also have changes in the nervous system, like blunted appetite regulation. You know, there is um, the appetite drop. There is um, blunted taste regulation. The way we test for water and for drink or fluid, it reduces. There is reduced nerve con conduction. That's impulse rates also increase, reduces the rate at which impulse is being sensed in the um, sensory organ or the nervous system reduces. It also, all these have general effects on the adults, old adults, sense of smell, the taste, the touch, and also cognition. Renal system also is affected at aging. The renal system has reduced number of nephrons. There's less blood flow in the renal system. That's where the, the kidney function reduces at, as well. Respiratory system mm -hmm. is also affected at aging. There's reduced breathing capacity. The capacity in which an adult or an old adult breathes reduces. The next slide, please. Okay, so the body composition changes, there are changes that occur in the body composition as aging begins. It alters the lifestyle, it also, mod, it also affects modification. And you know, as this body composition changes, there is a need for modified diet. There's a need to modify your nutritional needs. In free living older adults, we have nutritional risk status that can be found as important predictors to total number of physician visits. You know, in older adults, there is a need to see physicians. There's a need to see physicians to know what and what to take. And that's why we are talking about this now, the nutrition in retirement. Old adults use proportional, proportionately more, they need more healthcare system and than young people do. 
And so there is a need for nutrition intervention. And this nutrition intervention, it, it plays a larger role in the health of old adults. So there's that question that arises. So as an old adult from age 60, what do I consume? In what quantity do I take what I should consume? At what time should I consume this, this food? Can we move to the next slide? I'm just trying to go. The next slide. So good health habits would encourage, it would help to delay mortality rates. So when you eat well, when you have good healthy habits as an adult, it reduces the mortality rates and it also reduces morbidity rates. And so heart and um, cerebral vascular diseases are common amongst, they are common leading, leading causes of death amongst older ages. And we have them as risk factors, additional risk factors. We can see from our slide that we have a higher risk factor for heart diseases. If we don't consume right diet, we have from heart diseases ranging from 29% to diabetes mellitus ranging to for 3%. We also have common comorbid conditions that may come up they work hand in hand like arthritis, we have hypertension, health, heart disease, and obesity. So the diets of older adults contribute to the incidence and cause of their diseases. So diet is very important, especially for heart diseases, hypertension, and cancer. So we are here to preach a healthy diet for adults, for old adults. So can we move to the next slide? Good nutrition throughout. We are what there's an adage that says that we are what we eat. Good nutrition throughout contribute throughout the life contributes to optimal age. So the appropriate weights and nutrient levels in blood and other tissues would boost immunity and also prevent diseases. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention suggests that long longevity depends on 19% of genetics, 10% on access to high quality healthcare, 20% on environmental factors such as pollution, and 51% on lifestyle factor, part of which the eating habits and nutrition is included. Out of the 51, so what then constitutes good nutrition in old age? That's the question. What constitutes good nutrition in old age? What can I do that can boost my nutrition, that would boost also my immunity, that would reduce the um, reduce disease condition in old age? So can we move to the next slide? We have a few things that we can do. The first thing we need to do is to ensure that we incorporate nutrient-dense food in our diets. We ensure that the kind of food we, we eat, they, they contain or they constitute the right set of nutrients. We have micronutrients and macronutrients. The macronutrients are the, they are, they are the nutrients that we get in large quantity, such as the carbohydrates, the proteins, fat and oil, and then we have the micronutrients such as the vitamins, okay, we have minerals, we have, um, we have um, also water, also we need to stay hydrated, then we need to eat healthy fat choices, we need to ensure that consumption of alcohol is in moderation. We always advise everything you take, you need to take in moderation. Also taking note of your age, your activity level, your physical activity level, and your condition, the health condition as at when you're asked to consume this food. And also you need to also ensure that salt intake and sugar intake is reduced at this age from age 60 and above. So we, we're going to break it down now. What are these nutrient-based food that are allowed at old age. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. 
The nutrient dense food. Okay, so we have the whole grains. These whole grains, they are foods that contain complex carbohydrates. They are not easily broken down by the body. Okay, they are unprocessed foods with their nutrients intact. So we advise, we counsel that foods that are not processed should be consumed. They've not gone through any changes, chemical changes, and this includes all grain. All grains, we have um, oat, we have quinine, we have um, we have the wheat bread there. You can see the picture there. Then we have fruits and vegetables should also be incorporated in our foods. Okay, we have nuts, cashew nuts, almonds, we have bran nuts, then we have legumes like beans. We can see our red beans there. Okay, we can see the white beans, the different types of beans, and also proteins of high biological values. Proteins of high biological values are animal proteins like the meat, the fish, okay? But this is also in moderate quantities, okay? In right proportion. So can we move to the next slide? Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. I want to, to ask which one is better? Is it uh, uh, palm oil or other oils? What is the place of palm oil in the cooking of food? Okay, thank you very much, Ma. Would we'll answer that question. I'm still going to get to the oil, the base of palm oil. Okay. Palm oil, because we are still going to talk about healthy oil. Okay, okay. So I'll take it when we get there. Okay, so no we'll problem. move to um, drinking. Thank you very much, Ma, for that question. So that's been noted, base of palm oil in, in food. So drinking more water to stay mm -hmm. hydrated. Water is required to stay hydrated, to avoid dehydration in the body. There's a requirement, there's a daily requirement for men. It's expected that men should take about three liters of water, while women should take about 2.5 liters of water. I have, I have a pictorial um, illustration there. This translates to eight glasses of water. That's one and a half big ever bottle of water for the females and eight to 10 bottles of water. Um, glasses of water, which is two big ever bottles for the meal. That's for the, for the, that's the requirement to stay hydrated for water per day, the daily requirement. So can we move to the next slide? I think the next slide, that's where we have the oil. So we are sure that we have healthy oil, healthy consumption of oil. We ensure that we take fully unsaturated oils. Can we move to the next slide? Healthy oils are mono unsaturated. That's the oil. Healthy oils are the mono unsaturated oils, such as the canola oil, the sonola oil, the soya oil, the ground oil. We have palm oil as well, but in little quantity. Okay. For palm oil, it's about the chain. Palm oil should be used in moderation. The rate of saturation of this is actually different. So that's why we say palm oil should be used because of the level of saturation. So it should be used in, in moderate quantity. So plant oil, like the sonora oil, the soya oil, and also we have good oils from from your um, avocado pear, okay, which is also good for cholesterol. Okay, but all this should be taken in moderate quantities. Can we move to the next slide? Please? I don't know. No money, you're all out of money. Oh, you're 
yeah. It's just that you like, took common granite or you mean granite is very, very fast. Because a man took a water of so we can move to the next slide about the alcohol consumption. So for some people that, that consume alcohol, we understand that too many people they want to just relax themselves with alcohol. But we are trying what we are trying to say here is that alcohol excess alcohol is not too good for is not good for the body. So you take in moderate quantity. Okay, so you should be taking in limit in limited quantity as elderly, just half a glass of per day for females and a glass for male. Alcoholic one. Wines like red wine are preferred because they contain resveterol, which is an antioxidant. Antioxidants, they help in um, bad cells grow in the body. Okay, so which is very, very good for the heart. So if you have to take so if you have to take alcohol then you take red wine and the requirement for day is half a cup, half a glass for female and a glass for male. So can we move to the next slide? Intake and sugar intake. So we try as much as possible not to add salt to cooked food. We try not to add salt to cooked food. Okay, the ideal quantity for salt needed per day is only six grams, which is equivalent to one tablespoon, one teaspoon of salt. That's the ideal salt per day. Okay, salt contains sodium chloride. for one day is six grams. Requirement for a day is six, equivalent to six grams. Then sugar should not also be used in beverages. You can use sugar just like sweeteners. We have very good sweeteners like xylitol, okay? Sweeteners are usually like um, six grams less than, they contain six grams less in carbohydrate than um, normal sugar, that's sweetness. So also, I would like to also further explain that we have a lot of people come and they, they, they try to find, say that, oh, I don't consume salt, but I take Maggi. The truth is Maggi is flavored salt. Maggi has its own sodium chloride in it. It has its own sodium chloride in it. So we advise that as much as possible, if you have, uh, if you have used Maggi to cook from the beginning, then you really don't need salt to be added to your food. Okay, especially for those that are having cardiovascular disease, um, they're managing cardiovascular disease like hypertension. Okay, so we advise that the salt intake should be very, very minimal, okay? To, to avoid a further skyrocketing of it or deterioration of their health. So salt intake should be very, very minimal. Per day of the total quantity of salt that should be consumed in the total food we take per day should not be more than six grams, five to six grams, which is just one teaspoon per day. So imagine if you have used Maggi to cook your meal, your breakfast in the morning, the Maggi contains its own quantity of sodium chloride. In the afternoon, you put Maggi again, at night you put Maggi again, and in between already you take, um, if an individual takes canned food and all that, those also, those, uh, those food also have their own salt in it. So we need to really, really watch it. And that's why we preach as much as possible that we go for unprocessed food. Okay, so can we move to the next slide?
So physical activities, we should always engage in physical activities from mild to moderate, depending on one's capa capacity, what you can take per day. But it's advised that 30 minutes of exercise every day is very important. So you one can have physical activities like jogging. For the old adults, we advise jogging, bricks walking, dancing. Um, for any individual that is used to having physical activity before, you can of course go for cycling as if you're used to it. And then for those that are not even used to it, that just want to start on it. So you can be advised walking, bricks walking, climbing. You have treadmills that you, you can set the time and the speed that you use depending on your, the capacity that your body can take per time. So that's what we call my plate. My plate is a personalized um, way of showing what your plate should look like, what we should eat. The next, the next slide. So when we are eating, we expect that every everybody, especially the old adult, it helps a lot to consume what we call adequate diet. An adequate diet is a diet that contains every of this in this plate, my plate, your plate. You have the fruit, you have the vegetables, grains, proteins, and dairy. So that's what the plate should be made up of. A portion of, so for breakfast, to ensure that you have the nutrients that your fruit will give, or you can have your fruit as a whole, or you can blend it. You can have your green smoothie, okay? Then you have your vegetables as well. You have your proteins. Remembering that animal proteins are also very, very good. They are proteins of high biological values, okay, but in limited quantity. Okay, so can we move to the next slide, please? So what is the role of- Hello. Nutrition? Hello, Ma. Yes, please. Please, Ma, I want to ask, can we substitute normal breakfast with fruit? Okay. If you don't want to take the normal breakfast, can we take fruits instead? Okay, okay. Your question is that can you substitute normal breakfast with fruits? And my answer yes, is yes, you can substitute normal breakfast with fruits because everything we take goes down to carbon. It goes down to energy. What we are looking for, the reason why okay. you and I are eating is because we want to get energy to be able to expand for that day be able to move yeah. on that day. However, yeah. the, the form in which that energy is gotten can vary. So for it depends okay. on individuals. If, um, it's, if it's fine for you or you feel like having fruits, okay, you can have your fruits. But the problem is the quantity. Yes, the quantity. Yes. The, the problem fruits. now is the quantity. And so the quantity yeah. will be determined based on your body, based on your weight, based on your requirements. So that's why we call it personalized diet, what your body requires per time. So if we are recommending you to have, because all the food we have, all the food we consume per day um, breaks down to energy and energy is, is stored in, in, in form of calories. So for instance, if Mrs. A, Mrs. A's daily energy allowance is 2,500 kilocal per day, okay? That does not mean that Mrs. B's daily energy allowance will be 2,500 kilocal per day, okay? So is this 2,500 kilocal that will be shared for that day? And so okay. for your fruits, you also need to have to be sure of the kilocal. And that's why you need to talk to your nutritionist or your dietitian to help in calculating that. After which they must have classed okay. you, taking, taking into consideration okay, thank you. your age, your weight, your BMI, your physical activity, and if you have any condition, any medical condition that is being managed, which is nutritionally related. Okay, so Ma, the answer to your question is you can have your fruits as breakfast. You can have it whole, you can have it blended as smoothie, okay, but in, in moderate proportion okay. Okay. to fit into that 
requirement for that money to fit into to give you the energy required for that money for your body. Okay, I hope I've been able to answer the question. So the role of food and nutrition in aging. Food and nutrition contributes to wellness. Okay, good food and nutrition contributes to wellness, having the energy and ability to do the things that you want to do. Okay, and it helps you to feel in control of your life. When you, when you have good food and nutrition, you're emotionally okay, you're psychologically okay, you're physically okay. And then it helps you also to be independent and to have a higher quality of life. It boosts your immunity. Guys from disease, being predisposed to any infection, okay? Good nutrition also had lives to years and also had years to life. So the adage of we are what we eat, it also goes well. So whatever we eat, it's um, what we eat that sustains our body, okay? So that's the role of nutrition in aging. So we have the dietary recommendation. We have the dietary recommendation out of every, the energy that is required to be consumed per, per day. There is a percentage that is expected for you to have as carbohydrates. There's a percentage for you that is expected for you to have as protein. There's a percentage that is expected for you to have as, um, as fats, okay, per day. So we have recommended daily requirements. That's what we are going to do now. The next slide, please. Thank you. Dietary requirements. So for the macronutrients, it's expected that each male and female, the recommended intake should be at 0 0.6 gram per kilogram body weight per day. Okay? So whatever protein you're eating for that day will be calculated with your kilogram body weight per day. And what is expected for that is that out of rice has its own protein. The protein should be 0 0.8 per your body kilo, 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 your body weight, that's kilogram per day. Carbohydrate should be between 45 to 65 of the kilocalorie per day. Why? Because carbohydrate is bodybuilding. And also why? Because also we also take into consideration your physical activity the energy you expend per day. If you're a sedentary person or you're, you're active or you're moderately active or very active. Those are the things that we take into cognizance before we now calculate and plan a full day diet for you. So diet is individualized. So what I will give to you, to Mr. A will be different from what I'll give to Mr. B. We have dietary fibers also. We have the total fat, saturated fat, mono unsaturated fat. Cholesterol per day should be consumed, to be consumed should be 300 milligrams or less of the cholesterol. Cholesterol can also be found in food. Also, So yes, we can move to the next slide, which is for the um, micronutrients. Micronutrients are they, are, they are required in the body in very, very minute quantities. We have for vitamin A, vitamin D. Okay, these are the daily requirements. Okay, so of the fruits and vegetables we take, these fruits and vegetables are expected per day they are expected to give us fruits, vegetables, also the, the, um, the proteins we take, they also have their own, they have all this, some have their uh, micronutrients and their macronutrients. So these are the daily requirements too as well. So we move to sugar. We just want to have a pictorial view. Okay, so here we compare, what we've just done here is to compare various soft drinks and the equivalent sugar that they give us, okay? We have Coca-Cola. We can see that the Coca-Cola can has one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cubes of sugar in it. Wow. Okay. So, and this ten cubes of sugar. This is not energy dense. This is just calorie given. And we have said from the beginning that we should consume energy dense food. And when we have excess sugar in the body, it tends to affect the blood sugar level. So we advocate that it's better to go for your natural foods. And if you have to go for your fruits also in moderate quantities. So these are pictorial views of what we take in regularly. We have a lot of people that take carbonated drinks, okay? So that you can have an idea of what you take in part time. So we have the grapefruits there, we have the orange there. So instead of going for the Coca-Cola, the smallest Coca-Cola that will give you 10 cubes of sugar, why not go for grapes, okay? Good source of vitamin C, good antioxidants. Why not go for also um, orange, banana is there, okay? And we have other fruits, other fruits like cucumber, okay? Which is also very good. Okay. So, um, I think that's all. Thank you very much for. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Oluwa Korede. I did told you for that wonderful presentation. Uh, I think the floor is now open for questions. But before then, let me just share one or two things that I, that is my own takeaway from this presentation. Uh, number one thing that I had is that our health is related to our institution. And that was Oh, we have certain health challenges as a result of our nutrition. We may not get a cure, but just we can just be managing that health challenge we have. I also learned about our, I think, our food plate, my plate. We should have all the nutrition fruits, vegetable, I think um, our food plate. Protein. Okay, protein and then carbohydrate. And then I also learned that it's better we take natural food as against processed food. Yes. Uh, I was so elderly people, we are also to stay hydrated. I also like okay. that there are some oils that are not so good. For instance, we are asked to take palm oil and moderation. We are also to take salt and cinder in moderation. And then she did mention the fact that we should not add salt to cook food. And then she called Maggie flavored salt. So at times when we use uh, Maggie, we may not need to do salt anymore. We also advise us to engage in physical exercises and to take natural food. And then else, uh, the pictorial uh, analysis of sugar is also very exciting to me. Carbonated water carrying plenty of sugar. You have to be very careful. Those of us who are still taking uh, food and stuff like that. Uh, the floor is now free. We may indicate if you want to ask any questions. She's still here to take our questions. If you have any questions, please indicate so that we can ask her before we do the final. Question. Hello, ma. Go ahead, ma. Good afternoon, my director. Good afternoon, ma. 
How are you? Sir? How are you, man? I'm good. Now, where do my God will continue to bless you and nourish your brain? Ma, I want to ask. Uh, regard thoughts. There are other thoughts. Some people say there are six thoughts. Six thoughts. What is the place of thoughts? Same thing as sea salt. Hello, hello, ma. Hello, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yes, my question is how do we, how do we place sea salt in cooking? Since Mrs. Ade told me, but are you still there? Please, can you take the question? Since the sense of it. Okay. 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 So for since you said that um the question that was asked was that since um what's the percentage of since Yeah. Okay. So sea salt is um, mostly composed. Compose. Mostly composed. Come on, Taylor. Sea salt. Yes, it's mostly composed of sodium chloride. Oh, okay. It um, helps to regulate balance. The processing for it is minimally processed compared to the other salts. Okay is minimally processed. The stage or the level of processing is actually is less than that of other salt. However, it still contains sodium chloride. Okay. Some of other some other nutrients like contains are potassium, iron, and calcium. Most sea salt they don't really offer so much um, advantage health wise. Okay. Except okay. for the fact that the processing is is not as much as the other salt. So generally we advise whether sea salt or the um, other no salt matter. is fortified with iodine, the, the required daily allowance should not be more than five to six grams. For some, some will say some um Hello? This is on mute, ma. Hello? Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello? Yes. Have I been able to answer that Go question? Ahead, Hello? Go ahead, please. Uh, hey. Please, okay. I have intolerance I'll to I'll me. come over what I said again. I said the process for sea salt, the processing is minimally processed. Okay? It has it has potassium, it has iron, it has calcium in it. Okay. But at the same time, the general requirement for salt, sea salt contains sodium chloride. Salt contains sodium chloride. Some may be fortified with iodine. But the general requirement for salt is six grams should be consumed. Six grams, which is one teaspoon to be consumed in a day. That's the requirement for day, whether sea salt or the normal salt. But the process is different, is less processed. It's like having your your father rice and the polished rice. You know, the, the, the way they are processed is different. The father rice have more sharp in it, more fiber in it, than polished, totally polished rice. So that's the same thing for sea salt and the normal salt. So it's also in quantification. The daily requirement 
should not be more than six grams, which is one teaspoon a day. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma. Then Mrs. Akiteye, you can go ahead with your question. Please unmute. You can go ahead with your question, please. All right. Let's see what I want. Please unmute and go ahead with your question. I have intolerance to milk and shoko. Anything like a, um, a milo or bonvita. What can I be taking in substitute to it? Okay. For milk, milo, and sugar. Those yes. Those are yes. energy givings, ma. And they in have, substitute but... to it, you can have your, you can have your green tea. You can have your lip tea, okay? Right. You can have your, your lip tea, okay? okay? The reason why we say that for old adults is because it's energy giving, it's, it's um, calorie giving, and then because of the sugar in it, okay? At this age, we have something we call um, the non-communicable diseases. They are actually also chronic illnesses. These are illnesses that come up from the age of, for some people, 40, 45. Okay, these are diseases that occur, conditions that occur, not as a result of um, a spread. It's not viral, okay? But it's as a result of your lifestyle, environmental factor. And lifestyle can be broken down to what you consume. So at, that, at this age, we, yes, try to, what we try to advise or we counsel that older adults should do away with as much for instance if you're used to consuming milk milo like mm -hmm. um, five times weekly yes it starts by telling you to reduce your rate of consumption okay and okay. then you can substitute with your green tea you have green okay. tea that are very actually very very good that relaxes the nerves um okay. you have the chamomile tea okay actually very good or lip tea Okay, depending on your also the, the way your body reacts to it. There are some that may take the lip tea and um, they may react to it probably because of their blood pressure. So it depends mm. on the individual. Okay. All right. So for Thank you, ma. You can take your green tea. You're welcome. Thank you, ma. All right. I think we have Mrs. Imaswen in, in Antonia. Please unmute and go ahead with your question. Is it there? And Mrs. Imaswen Antonia. Okay, do we have any more questions? Hello. My hand is up. Okay. Go ahead with your question, ma. This is Imaso and okay. Antonia. Okay, thank you. Well done. I want to know if I'm to continue eating semolina, fufu, gare. I just want to know the, the one that is better for me now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to know if you should continue to take Gary, Semolina, Fufu. Yes. Okay, these are all carbohydrates. Yes, they're all carbohydrates of food. Like I said from the beginning, um, we usually don't say stop. Now it depends on the individual health state and condition at that time. So if I were to advise on a very neutral ground with no underlying state of condition, I would say yes, because they are, they are sources of carbohydrates too. They are macronutrients, okay? So, but if you have to take in limited quantity, in limited quantity based on your requirements, your energy requirements per day. So if you really want to know the, 
the, the quantity you, you need to take for your own body, then you need to see a, your nutritionist, okay? So that we can plan according to what your body can take in, okay? After taking into consideration all your vitals, that's your, um, your body weight, your body height, if you're overweight, if you're underweight, okay? So we plan based on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. I also see Ezad Pamsek who would like to ask a question. Mrs. Daudi, please unmute and go ahead with your question, Ma. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the presenter, Ms. Aditebu. Ah. Uh, the uh, presentation was quite lucid and detailed. I just want to know that, uh, unfortunately, you didn't mention anything about honey in your presentation. Will, will you uh, recommend it as yes, a better yes. option to sugar? And then what's the role of, um, what's your view on pineapple, taking of pineapple among the fruits to be taken? Thank you. Ma, All, right. Ma. All right, thank you very much, Ma. Only the sweet syrup, okay, it's um it's actually in a very simple form. It's beneficial to the body, okay. It has less grams in terms of carbohydrates than sugar. So however, we preach that if you have to take it, you take in limited quantity to as well. Everything is in moderacy. So that does not mean that because um, only the good antioxidant is rich in antioxidants, okay, is less bad than sugar for diabetes. Yes, because it has less carbohydrates. It's less than sugar, than the processed sugar. You know, sugar has gone through its own processing, a lot of processing, okay? So honey is also very good. It has antioxidants. It can help in lowering blood pressure. It can also help to improve blood cholesterol, okay? It can also help to lower the um, low density lipoprotein, which is, which is a bad cholesterol in the body. So honey is good. However, you need to take it in moderation. If you have to take it, you need to ensure that, um, for instance, if you've been taking five to or 10 cubes of sugar and you say, okay, honey is very, very good now. So I can take 10, 10, 10 spoons of honey, that's tablespoons of honey in just a glass of, a glass of tea. I would say no to that because everything in excess too is not too good, okay? So I hope I've been able to answer that question. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. How about the pineapple issue? Okay, okay so for pineapple, for pineapple, pineapple is good for inflammation, is good for, for uh, is, is, is not too good for, for diabetes because of the sugar. Is, it has a high glycemic index. The glycemic index is a, is, is a rate at which, is a glucose response in the body, is a rate at which uh, the body responds to glucose. So we actually preach that for panipo, for older age adults, we tell them no, panipo is not too good because of sugar. Because of the, 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 the kind of sugar in it, the way it would, it would the glycemic index, the way the sugar would go, pump into the body. It's not a slow, it's not a complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates would break down slowly. Okay. Okay. This one goes, it goes straight into the bloodstream. So for mm. those that have, that are managing diabetes, okay, we don't preach pineapple because of the high glycemic index, okay? So pineapple in, it, it, we hardly say take freely, okay? We have this say take freely, okay? So on the alternative, you can actually take uh, watermelon, which is better, okay? Less sugar in watermelon than the pineapple. 
All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please, do we have more questions? More questions? Hello? Go ahead. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. Please go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Please go Hello? ahead with your question. Okay, ma, I want to talk about the sugar cane. Is it good for a diabetic patient to take sugar cane? <laughs> Not that I'm diabetic, I just want to know. You know, sugar cane is a natural fruit. How do we go about it? Mm, natural diabetics. Sugar base. Okay. Any food on tomato drink? Okay. Sugar cane. Tomato drink. Go to go to food to develop. Tomato drink. No go area. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, Mark. So you asked concerning sugar cane. Yes. Sugar cane is a natural fruit, but it's high, like it has high glycemic index. The sugar base is oh. high. The calories okay. also high. You know, I explained that everything we take, okay, is broken down to energy. Energy is stored as calorie in oh. our body. So 100 grams of sugar cane gives you 269 calories. So an average elderly, an old, old woman, okay, from 60 and above is supposed to take between, consume between 1,006 and 2,002 kilocal per day. So imagine if you now take sugar cane one sitting, 100 grams could be maybe like two stocks. It could even be more than two stocks because it, it varies according to the size and the shape of the sugar cane. So if one is taking that sugar cane as a fruit or in between meals, if you're already consuming 269 grams in 100 grams, 100 grams has 269 calories. And it's expected of you that in a day, you're supposed to consume between 1,006 and 2,200 calories per day. As in between meals, you're already taking 269 calories. And it also has sugar. Of course, the carbohydrates in it is high. Carbohydrates you're supposed to take yeah. per day should be between 45% and 60% of that 200, 2,200 calories. Okay? So imagine how much the sugar cane has already given you and how much carbohydrates you have taken in. And so excess of it to be stored in the body will be stored as adipose tissues eventually you're adding fat to your body and when that happens okay it would also have effects effect on insulin breakdown of your food when there's an excess again it would have if it would have effect on once there is excess storage in the body it will have effect on the weight in the body so everything is 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 it works hand in hand so for me i would not advise sugarcane is not is not advised for elderly because it's high in calorie and it's also it has the the carbohydrates in it the sugar in it is is high it has high glycemic index. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. You can still take one more question. Let's take one more before we round up. One more question or comment. You may not have a question, you may want to make a comment. I have a question, my hand has been up. Please. Okay, go ahead, sir, Mr. Lamai. Yes, thank you. My question has to do with a package food drink. Uh, it, is, it is said that- Please, we need you to this, be uh, more audible. Okay, I said my- It's often said that this package fruit drinks are 100% natural. 
And I know that uh, when I process, if by myself I juice an orange, it cannot last hours. But these packaged food drinks have shell rice pan of weeks or more, carbonated. I just want to know the health implication because we are told that it is 100% natural. It is as if you are eating a fresh, a fresh food. And is it recommended that uh, senior citizens like us, should, since we may not be able to peel orange or peel pineapple, uh, consume the packaged food drinks? Thank you. OK, so uh, thank you for that question. You asked concerning packaged food drinks. OK, so for packaged food juice, it's gone through processing. OK, there's nothing that's gone through processing that has not had something go down in it. That's the honest truth. Except if mm -hmm. it's been extracted in your house and you have seen it. Of course, in their packaging, they have preservatives in it. They have things to preserve it. OK, so I we, we counsel patients as much as possible Foods that are being processed should be avoided, okay? And if they have to be taken, be taken in limited quantity. And also processing for, processed food for senior citizens is not really advisable because senior citizens, um, they are vulnerable, they are vul we can we categorize them as part of the vulnerable groups that whose health are predisposed to many health conditions. So we advise that as much as possible, you take nutrient dense foods, which are unprocessed, okay? So daddy, please, if you need to take, um, if you need to take orange, squeezed orange, it should be fresh, fresh juice, not packaged. The packaged are already processed, okay? So if you need to take it, we have a lot of um, house um, outlets there that they can prepare it fresh in front of you, okay? Some, we have to do one or two things to preserve, okay, to preserve their shelf life, okay, and to get it out there in the market. So it's not really advisable, sir. Mm -hmm. And if you have to take it, reduce the, the, the quantity, quantity in taking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Mrs. Adito, can we take just one more comment? One more comment. Okay. Since we don't have any more questions, can somebody please, on behalf of all participants, appreciate Mrs. Ade Toyibo for that wonderful presentation. On behalf of every one of us, I appreciate Mrs. Ola Toyibo for wonderful presentation she has presented to us. May the Lord help you and grow grant you good health in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You also appreciate you the director. Um, I want to believe that the PS is still with us. He may have one or two things to also share with us as we draw close to the end of the program. The PS is While we are trying to get the PS to come on board to close the program for us, I want to appreciate all of us for joining the webinar today. I want to say thank you most especially to members of Allah Hubs that have joined us. Uh, I see Mrs. Uh, 
Daudu, thank you very much, Mrs. Daudu, for joining us. I also see Mrs. Raji, thank you for coming on board today. Thank you. We are glad to have you. Uh, Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Johnson, good to see you. I see, I'll see my Alaka. Thank you for joining us. Even though you are with us, I see that you are with us. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. I see Thank Mr. You. Moses. Thank you for joining us. I recognize everyone. Thank you all for joining us. I see Mr. Bakari as well. Oh, and he's even raising his hand. Thank you for joining us. Let's take uh, Mr. Bakari. Mr. Bakari, can you unmute and say something while we wait for the PS? Mr. Bakari. He raised his hand. Hello? Yes, we are here. We are listening. Mr. Bakari, are you still there? Hello. Wow. Yeah, Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. We are here, sir. Yeah. Well, I I want to uh, express my sincere appreciation for this particular topic. You see, I in doing that, I like to refer to one statement Mr. Yusuf, formerly of the Innovation Office. I'm sure many people of us will remember him. Once told us at the seminar that the best way to know what we should or we should not eat is to just take this simple yoga or tara. In other words, whatever you, you enjoy eating or drinking too much, especially the sugars, is not good for your health. And that whatever you don't feel comfortable eating or drink, especially because they are bitter, are good for you. He said that at a seminar. So I think this should also be used as a kind of guide for all of us so for especially for those of us who enjoy taking things that are sweet at this age i think sweet things especially sugary foods should be avoided because i also learned at the seminar that sugars all, uh, almost always feed the cancers and along with the cancer at this time Thank you, Mrs. Drew Dollar, for the wonderful job you are doing, especially for elevating the post service department to whatever it has reached for now. I'm sure it is still the starting point for you. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, with that, uh, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Uh, the PS is in this post now. He is in another meeting. In fact, he actually informed me that he will be, he will be having a meeting. I thought probably he will still be available. But he's presently at that meeting now. Once again, I want to use this opportunity 
to say thank you to all of us that have joined the webinar today. And I want to believe that we have taken one or two lessons with us. It's so easy to know certain things. And then at the end of the day, we may not implement. Please, let's ensure that we take to everything that we've had. Let's take less sugar. If you have not heard of a glycemic index, I had that one today. Fruits that you can eat and then it will immediately send sugar to your blood. Please let's avoid them. Uh, I pray that God grant all of us good health in our old age. Blessings and diseases will be far away from us. Amen. As we started with a prayer, I want somebody to give us a closing prayer as we close. Don't want to greet me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. bless you for the grace to be a participant of this uh, impactful uh, seminar. We pray that God shall give us this grace. All what you have learned today shall give us the grace to implement it and do it rightly to your glory and to our blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. As we departed, may his presence go with Amen. us in Amen. the mighty name. Pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Amen. for that short prayer. May God bless each and every one of us as we come to a close. Amen. I say bye bye until Amen. next time on this program. Bye. I want to refresh our memory. It's a bi monthly webinar. One is health related, and the second is finance and business related. Okay. I want to assure you that we are going to have another wonderful session first week in June. And until then, I want to say bye bye to each and every one of us. Bye bye. Bye bye, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ma. Thank you. I believe. Oh, yeah, look.